Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolf Quest 3, where we are here with our Generation 3 Dark Moon Air Basil, as he is very hungrily salivating and drooling over the wounded deer that we have in front of us, who actually is on the move again. We're gonna have to keep an eye on her and make sure that we are tracking this particular deer while we go ahead and wait for our mate Catalina to come and catch up with us so that hopefully we can finish this hunt. Because unfortunately for Basil, we actually ended up a little bit too wounded to continue to hunt this deer all on our own. But if we can get our mate to come and join us, then there's a good chance that we'll be able to finish off this hunt no problem. And that would definitely be great for Basil because he has got a huge appetite. And even though he's not terribly hungry, he really, really, really wants to just be able to get this deer. It's just in his personality. He's our chonker boy. He can't help it. He really wants to be able to enjoy some tasty, fresh prey. Also, Catalina is almost here. And it is kind of interesting to go ahead and lie in wait to have the patience of a predator. We'll go ahead and have the patience of a predator over here, away from the annoying flies and fleas. And I really love how Basil is one of the very first wolves we've ever had in Wolf Quest who actually really likes to hide behind things, to use a little bit of an element of stealth when it comes to doing his hunting. And Catalina is making her way over as quickly as she can. And I like how the deer doesn't seem to be able to really decide what to do. We haven't lost her yet. We just really need to wait for our mate. And then we'll go ahead and start the hunt again. Wow, and look at how beautiful this is. Basil, you're a smart boy. He's almost gotten this mule deer down. And now we know we just need to be very patient. And this actually reminds me a lot of what happens when you watch uh, animals like lions go on a hunt. They will have such immense patience. I feel like cheetah and jaguars also have a whole bunch of patience. Leopards, when I've seen them hunt. Jaguars are trickier because they're actually often arboreal hunters that will stay up in the trees and then jump down. Wow. But just thinking about it, it just it's so exciting to think how this kind of patience is totally normal. All right, and Catalina's almost here, so I wonder if we should start chasing the mule deer towards her. But if we do our hunting in this territory, there she is! I see Catalina in the distance! Or at least maybe a deer that she's scaring away, which is kind of hilarious. Yeah, I think she's scaring another deer away way, 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 way over in the distance. It's just like a couple little dots moving. Oh, heck! Our deer, meanwhile, was trying to make an escape for it. All right, does that mean... All right, let's do this. We're going to keep a good eye on our deer and see if we can maybe pursue it a little bit further back towards where our mate is. All right, there's the deer. Now, where is Catalina? Coming towards us! All right. Any second now, this rabbit has no idea how lucky it is. Any second now, I'm sure she'll be coming. And we're just going to keep an eye on this deer. All right, Catalina, yes, she's here, you guys. All right, she's coming up over the ridge. And then once she gets here, let's see, where is she? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, come on, Catalina. There she is. All right. Together, Catalina, together. Grab it. Okay, good, good, good. Now we need to get back. And we're going to rely a lot on Catalina to help us out with this. Because Basil is almost doomed. Yes. Oh, this is so wonderful to see how having a pack mate is really making all of the difference here. And one final bite. Yes! Oh, that was so cool! That was totally worth the patience! I love that! Look at these two! They're such great hunters together. I really, really think that they just make a fantastic pair. Ah, oh, Catalina. I really like that we picked her as our mate. All right, let's go ahead and we'll grab some noms fill up our stomachs. We'll go ahead and grab a chunk 
to take home to the pups. And then on our way home, we'll actually mark territory over at these two spots as we work our way back over to our own den. And we'll even see if we can take over this spot of second meadow so that we can keep our pups safe and away from any very, uh, very hungry predators. All right, there's that. Are you full, Catalina? Catalina can have a little more to eat. She's 103% full, but if we're patient, she'll actually get even more food in her stomach. And we can take it back to our pups. Oh, she's such a good huntress. Oh, and now Basil is completely exhausted. A very successful, longer hunt that we were very patiently waiting to finish up. Definitely would leave him pretty tired, considering we fought a grizzly bear last night. Like, his last night, at least. It was a few days ago for us. All right. She... Oh, look at that. 117% full. He is so polite, waiting until she's able to go ahead and basically fill up. 125. That's pretty much the max. All right. We'll leave the rest to all of the scavengers to enjoy. And actually, these two filled up on a lot of mule deer. I thought there wasn't going to be... It was kind of going to be a waste for putting Basil's life that close to being at risk. But actually, <laughs> turns out that they had a lot more space to fill up their stomachs than I thought they did. All right. I'll go ahead and mark this spot. And then if we can get away with it, I think Basil might actually try sleeping away more or less a whole day. Because he's really quite wounded. He might just want to roll around with his fluffy little puppies. I think, oh, there's another den nearby. Heck. Man, if we could go ahead and locate a brand new den again, I think that would really impress Catalina. Is it this way? Okay. There's a den somewhere over here. I don't smell it yet. Oh, wait, over here. All right, there's some den right over. <gasps> it's the moss tree den! We discovered one of our ancestral dens. This is actually the moss tree den that we took over with a meadow. Oh, that would be kind of fun to visit the moss tree den with a future generation. I don't, maybe Demeter will go ahead and choose that spot too. Wow, that moss tree den is actually much more centrally located than I remember as well. <laughs> I really thought it was further up to the north, but that's okay. All right. Basil, you just need to not run into any cougars. You need to not run into any grizzly bears. No stranger wolves. At this point, I think, like, another stranger wolf could just wolf in Basil's direction and he might die because he's so, so beat up. I feel so much for him. I feel like Catalina just kind of watches him. And our boy Basil just constantly is scruffy and beat up, but has, like, a heart of gold and he's super kind. But he is always constantly covered in hoof marks. He's, he looks increasingly tattered through no, no ill will of his own. All right. I'll go ahead and strengthen this spot. I'm glad she's interested in keeping all of this strong with us too. And then we'll try to take over this final little spot with Second Meadow because it's just right to the south of where our pups are hiding. And we really want to try our best to keep all of that area as cordoned off as possible so that we don't have the Prospect Peak Pack trying to raid us. However, I do like the fact that they seem to stick to their side of the river this time around. They got very aggressive when we had Generation 1 when we were working with Meadow. But this time, they seem to be extremely patient. Oh, there's another den nearby! What? Another abandoned coyote den! Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and follow our noses to this spot. Somewhere right over here. And there we go, another den. Okay, I don't think this is like, I don't think that's actually the den that we stayed at with Meadow, but I do think it's one of the dens that she had found at some point. All right, let's see if we can claim this chunk before the stranger wolves come. How much? 10%? Okay. That shouldn't take long as long as we can... Oh, that bunny made me jump. I was like, no, the stranger wolves and basils this week. We could die. This is actually quite the risk to his life. But he will put his life on the line if it means protecting his little fluff balls. 
right, come on, we're so close, just 3%. All right, let's come over and come on. Catalina, help! We need to mark more territory, Catalina. Oh, finally, yes! <laughs> there we go! Okay, time to go ahead and make our way back up to the babies and let poor, exhausted Basil just sleep the day away. I am so proud of him. He really has accomplished a lot. And we'll strengthen up this spot. Just so absolutely nobody can, can mess with us. Nice, nice. And we'll go home with Catalina. Whew. They actually have a much bigger territory than I was expecting. But it seems to come a lot more naturally to Basil to keep a large territory as compared to his uncle Achilles. Achilles didn't really care about a large territory because he was so busy herding all seven of his puppies into the same place. So I wonder if it's kind of easier with only four puppies to be able to keep everybody in line. Let's keep going, let's keep going. You got this, Basil. I really love that their den this time is kind of like a mountain <laughs> that we can run right up to. And I love how Catalina enjoys climbing on top of it. Like, that's just so cool. There it is. Oh, I wish we could stay at this one more or less the whole time. This mountain is so neat. I, I feel like this is about to become a favorite of the Dark Moon pack. Because it's just got the best views. I think it's one of the prettiest spots we've ever done at. And hello, little ones! Your dad is completely beat up and exhausted. Whoops, sorry about that, Rosetta. We don't know our own strength. I was trying to regurgitate some food for you. There we go. Let's go ahead and regurgitate that. And then we'll give some to Argon. There we are. And then I think Basil is going to go ahead and maybe play for just a second with any pups who want to play. And then I feel like he and Catalina are definitely tired and ready for a very nice long nap. So why don't we go? Oh, look at her. I love how Catalina's even coming in to play with the puppies. We're such a happy little family. Please, nothing bad happened to us. I, I, I think I will be unusually upset if something bad happens to Basil and his pups, because he just seems so sincere about his desire to take care of them. Oh good, all four puppies. I was worried for a second. All right, we might let Basil get a big nap too. We'll feed the babies first. Woken up in the middle of the night by hungry puppies. Totally normal. We'll let them go ahead and eat. And then Catalina is actually off. We'll howl, oh no, there she is. All right, did everybody get a chance to get something? Oh, they're so precious. All right, we'll give them a little more food. Phew, and thank goodness, so we're not on the edge of death anymore. But we are very, very tired. Oh, look at Catalina play with them too. I love seeing how she's really into it. She feels like the kind of partner that we haven't had since Meadow and Genesis, who really just had each other's backs. And no matter what, they were going to like work as a team to take care of the pups, to be able to like defend their territory. I really feel like this group thinks more about their family than they do about like the moon pack as a whole, like honoring the moon pack and helping the moon pack to become even stronger. I don't think they think about that nearly as much as they're just thinking about each other. And I think Catalina's gonna go look at the stars for a minute. Oh, all right, so let's check on our pups real quick. Badger is already quite the chonker at 7.7 .7 pounds, so he is almost two pounds ahead of several of the other pups. Um, mouse is still the smallest, itty bitty little mouse at 6.1 pounds. And Rosetta and Argon are just our happy little middle pups. There's not a lot of fleas at this den so far, thank goodness. But we will go ahead and try to keep a stronghold on the territory down here, as much as we can at least, so that we can try to move 
move over to two other cave type dens at some point. However, they're so far away and this mountain's so beautiful, it might be a mate heart quest that we might consider ignoring. But if the flea infestation does get so bad that we have to move, at least we know we have the perfect backups already lined up. So all right guys, thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Basil did manage to make it by being very, very patient. Oh dear, Rosetta, where are you going? She's our little wanderer this time, kind of like Demeter was in Achilles' Generation 2 pack. And if you guys would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.